Hello friends, hip cats and groovy chicks. Welcome to the Jazz Ranch. You know, I'm not in the picture right now because we're hurrying out the door. We're heading for North Carolina and uh, we won't see you for a while. It's our usual trek down south. But I wanted to give you this lesson on the sharp 1113 chord, the dominant 7 sharp 1113. Now this is what I call the definitive jazz chord. It's not an unusual chord, but it's a chord that is used so much in jazz and even in popular music as well, popular standards, that we really need to understand it in depth because it's a great chord and it really is a, gives us a lot of freedom what, with what we can do with the melody in terms of giving it a harmonic structure. And we're, I hope I'm going to show you some of that this evening. So here we go, right into the lesson on what I call the definitive jazz chord. Here we go. I want to talk about a chord that I call the definitive jazz chord. Now, the reason I'm calling it that because it has everything in it. It's not very unusual in a lot of ways. It's very common and it's used all the time, even in popular music and in this movie score for Moon River. But what it is, it's building a block chord in thirds, like root, third, fifth, seventh, now ninth, and then 11 and 13. But in this case, I'm going to use root, third, fifth, seven, nine, sharp 11, and then 13. So there's the major version of it, and then there's the dominant version of it, dominant seventh version, which is more common and more used. And that's the one I'm going to talk about mostly in this video. So it's root third, fifth, flat seven, nine, 
sharp 11, 13. So now, how do I figure that out? Well, it looks like it's a D chord here and a C chord here with a dominant seventh. And that's really what it is. You can take any chord, like F7, and then put a whole step above it, a G, a G triad, and you, you have the chord. E flat, seven, put an F chord against it, you have the sharp 11 and the 13. Now, how do we know that? We count up from the root. One, two, three, there's your third, major third. Perfect fifth. 11, 7 is flatted, 7th, octave is 8th, 9th is the same as the 2, 10th is the same as the 3, now here's the 11th, which is the 4, now sharp 11 is going to be the sharp 4 or flat 5, 12 is the same as the 5, and then the 13 is the same as the 6, so it's like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, sharp 11, 13, that's the major form, the dominant has root 3rd, 5th, flat 7, 9, sharp 11, 13. That's the one we're going to talk about and we're going to apply it to this song. Actually, we're going to apply the major version of it and the dominant version of it in this song. So here we go. This is the cover of my book and a lot of people have asked me to do lessons from the book in the video, so it will link to the book. Well, that's also in my playlist, but this is how the book is laid out. It's in a three-ring binder. It's, it's designed to be fit into a three-ring binder of yours. And you can see that it lies flat on the music stand. You can take any of these pages out to photocopy them easily. Have you ever tried to photocopy out of a lot of, a lot of music books? And it, it, you have to do it ten times to get it lined up correctly. Well, you're not going to have this problem in my book. It's very practical that way. We're going to look at the chapters now that I'm going to talk about in this video. In chapter two of book one, I go into the various intervals within the octave and above the octave. And in book two on chapter 17, I talk about upper, upper structure chords, color tones and upper extensions. So all the theory is laid out here, all the types of chords and combinations here. It eventually gets all into detail about the nines, elevenths, and thirteenths, and where, what type of chords they apply to. And then you get a, an example, a written out example, and then ultimately you get a song to play. See, this is quite an extended chapter because there's a lot of information in there. And then you get a song, I Love It Here to Stay, which uses the upper extensions. So it's very practical that way. You know, I did a video on Moonlight in Vermont, and I talked about ninths. And some people asked me, well, why don't you show us elevenths and thirteenths? So I thought about, well, what, what song would it illustrate the elevenths and thirteenths really well? And I hadn't considered Moon River. And, you know, I always thought of that as sort of more like, that's a movie song. It's very commercial. You know, Andy Williams, the whole bit. It's a singer's song, it's not really a jazz tune. But the thing is, Moon River is one of the greatest songs ever written, in my opinion. I don't care what your category you put it into. First of all, it's very easy to remember and sing. Why? Because it all is, all the notes in the melody are within the, the diatonic scale. And in this case, we're gonna use C. So, you know, if you're an alto singer, you're probably gonna keep, use it, play it in F. But it was written in C, and that's the key that's most well-known, easiest key to understand as well. But the melody, all of it is right on in the key, look. It's, all, it's like simple almost. It's like what makes it hip is the chords. Now, <laughs> this is Henry Mancini. He's a jazz musician, you know. he, You, you can take a simple melody that's in just diatonic like that and you can make give it beauty by the chords you know like like that chord there and this and the chord progression now there's your first use of the of the eleventh chord now that's a major eleven actually that's a sharp eleven on a major chord now, let's figure that out all right let's say so we're gonna go yeah so it's five now right away you have this note that doesn't fit the chord. It's an A minor. So it goes one. What what holds the, the song together is that it goes one, six, four, three, right? Four, three, and then two, five, one into the six chord. So in other words, there's two, five, ones, and there's a lot, a very logical progression. But what makes it so unique is how those chords fit in with the melody, how they link up with the melody. Like, first of all, that's the fifth, but now right away, we got an A minor with an eleventh in it, right? So we have a minor eleven. How do we know that? Because there's eight, there's root, there's the octave, which is eight, nine, ten, eleven. You see, so it's the octave above. 
doesn't matter if you put it up here or put it up there. So Mancini has a real grasp of, of harmony and melody, so he can use the diatonic song and make it sound hip or make it interesting by altering the chords in such a way that they still make sense. They have good logical progression there, but yet he, he's, the melody be, comes out on the 11th or the 13th or an, an unusual note, not a chord tone. You know, first of all, the 11th is the same, we said the same as the 4th, so that would be a passing tone in the scale, right? But let's look at the C scale. Chord tone, you know, you have a chord, so those are the chord tones. So that's chord tone, passing tone, this D, which is the ninth. Third is a, is a chord tone. The fourth or the eleventh is a passing tone. See, it's not in the chord. The fifth, of course, or the twelfth is a, a chord tone. Now the thirteenth or the sixth is a passing tone. See, so you have chord tone, chord tone, chord tone, chord tone. You have passing tone, passing tone, passing tone. This could also be thought of as a passing tone, but usually those. So the eleventh, you can see, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The eleventh and the thirteenth and the ninth are passing tones. They don't fit the chord, so you can use diminished chords on them, or you can just let let them uh, be uh, dissonant. You know, like this is more dissonant. If I did this, I, that's more than this. Okay, there, there, I'm putting it in a diminished chord. It makes it more consonant. There, it be, and that's consonant because it's a chord tone. So it's a chord tone and a diminished chord. Hope you follow me on that one. But these eleventh chords and Let's continue, like, so he has fifth, there's your 11th, there's your 11th again, there's your 11th again on the minor chord now. There it is, the 11th again, just repeating that phrase. There's the half diminished chord now, two five into A minor, the third now, fifth, now here's your, 13th now. Okay, let's look at that chord. Root, third, fifth, th flat seven, nine, sharp 11, 13. So on a dominant chord, you really want most of the time the sharp the 11th, although sometimes if you want a suspended, you have this on a dominant chord, you have the suspended fourth. It's really an 11th chord. Sometimes you'll see it marked as that B flat 11, but it's a suspended fourth. You can call this, uh, I might call this B flat nine sus, like that. And that's the sus there, that's the suspended fourth. There's the nine, you see. Not, not flat nine is not as common, but it's used. And the straight nine is not used because of the, you have that, see. But you have this now on the uh, nine, 10, 11, 12 bar, you have. So there's your flat 13, or you have, sorry. There's your 13 to your sharp 11 in the melody. See, so Mancini's using these sharp 11s and the 13s and 9s in his melody line, you know, and it works because the melody still is diatonic. It's a beautiful melody, and the chords hold together because it's a great progression. They work in a 2 5 1 or in a, in a progression of a cycle of fifths or in a stepwise progression. That always keeps it the glue in the harmonic structure, which you have to have, at least in popular songs, not so much in um, abstract, you know, jazz or, you know, contemporary stuff, but in your traditional uh, Great American Songbook. And this Moon River is one of the most popular songs in the world, and that's the reason, because it has a great melody. It has the glue in the harmonic structure, and he's using very hip chords and more, more like dissonant notes against it, and then consonant, dissonant and consonant. That's the beauty of music. It's dissonant and it's consonant, so it's always in tension and it's always resolving. So you have both sides of the spectrum. The yin-yang, you know, the plus-minus, the day-night, all of that stuff. Another use of the 11th interval in a chord is an example of the C sus4. When you see sus4, it means that the third is raised, so that'd be the fourth step of the scale as a C sus4. It's usually played at uh, like an amen. They call it suspended over the bar. If you add the flat seven, now you have a C7 sus4. If you add the nine, now you have a C9 sus4. Now you have the 11 up there. So now you can just call that a C11. 
and it's used a lot in p popular music, like it's the Burt Bacharach signature sound. That type of sound, very open sounding. Um, so that 11th now, 11th step of the scale, you can look at this in a simple way by just playing C, 5th there, and then root and 5th, and then add a triad that's a whole step below that root of the C. So it's a C here and a B flat here. Now that gives you the C9 sus of it, C9 11 or the C11. So the same thing with F. We go to F, play a whole step below it, up an octave. There's an F11 chord, an F, F sus 9 or sus 11, however you want to call it. Same thing with a G. You play a G, I play an F. No. D, play a C. That's an easy way to find that chord, the sus 9 or the sus 11. So I should probably say that Mancini wasn't the first to, uh, we say, break the barrier and use jazz concepts in popular music or, or, you know, Broadway music or Hollywood music, you know, movies and so on, because, you know, Kern did that. I mean, the great, you know, Gershwin did it, you know, Cole Porter, they all did that prior to this. But... Um, Mancini did it in such a way in which there was a jazz rhythm to it. So adding the rhythm, the swing rhythm and the swing eights that Mancini did makes it um, more of a jazz concept. But also he used a thicker harmony structure, I think. You know, more complex chords. But he used all the, the, the good techniques, like for instance, this is really good. Uh, take the song from here, the A minor. So he's using an inversion there of a C7 to the four chord. Then this, the, here's his chord, jazz chord, really a jazz chord that has a ninth, sharp 11, 13th. And then he uses this asc descending line in the bass to this half diminished chord and these two fives, B, half diminished, I mean, sorry, F half diminished to B13, E minor 7 to A13. So he has this progression, you know, like moving back to the C, which is, that's very much a jazz progression. You know, it's the flat, uh, flat 5 to the 7 dominant, to the 3, to the 6, to the 2, to the 5, or the 2, or the alt, uh, tritone substitute to the one. So those kind of progressions are really jazz progressions. And he got away with it in a very popular song because it's it's a ballad. The rhythm was waltz time and he put it to a movie and it has a beautiful melody and it's just a perfect perfect song. It's a gem of a song. You should learn this and, and everyone should have this in their repertoire. Moon River. So I'm just keeping this video simple talking about the sharp 11 or the 11th chords and the 13th added on. I'll do more on this. This is just touching on it with um, what I call a very hip definitive jazz chord, the sharp 11 13th on the dominant. And we'll leave it at that. And uh, write to me, let me know what you'd like after this because I need your guidance to, uh, and I need your requests. So write to me, tell me how you like this. And if you learn something, you can look up the score on my website. And check out my book. And until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend, Henry Dressel, swing loose, and we'll see you around the block. Bye-bye.